So hello, welcome to the uh, reviewer recommendation, uh, data ex exploratory analysis. And uh, in the previous demo, I've showed you how can, can you uh, how how can we provide you a service that uh, collects all the data from a repository you want to inspect. And now we can see we can I, I can show you how you can use that data or what. Or, or what kind of analysis we can provide for that data for you. So this, so the main focus of uh, this demo is to show uh, pull requests reviewing. This is not an OpenShift origin dataset. This is a scikit-learn dataset, but uh, you know it's the same. Uh, the same features are used here as in the OpenShift origin dataset. So we can have a look at the data and. Uh, yeah, some of the features I've deleted and some of the features will be deleted. So the, this was just uh, uh, removing some unnecessary features from data frame that MI now do, does not uh, aggregate. And yeah, then, then we can move on to, on to the analysis. So uh, we, can, we can see uh, the, the data, data was collected for pull requests, and each pull request has a created by uh, or created at timestamp, which is number of seconds uh, uh, after the epoch. So we can uh, convert it, convert that to the uh, daytime objects, and we can plot some some basic figures like number of created, uh, like number of pull requests created in time. This is a Cumulative, cumulative uh, graph. So, uh, so basically, zero pull requests were at the beginning of the repository, and you know it, it adds up into time. We can also see, uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, this is the cumulative sum. Yeah, uh, throughout the time of the scikit repository. Then, if we want to. Uh, you know, do something in regards to reviewer recommendation. We can see uh, how, yes, I'm, I'm going, uh, sorry for that. Uh, I can go further, this is just a data processing. And yeah, we can, we can see how many pull requests were created for each day, uh, starting from the beginning of the scikit repository up until now. Mm -hmm. uh, then we can we can add the data frame uh, a day of week and an hour because uh, the basic hypothesis is, hypothesis is that uh, you know humans work like humans. They have days in a week where where they uh, can where you can spot some patterns. So for example, some contributors can work exclusively on Wednesday and etc. And some contributors can work uh, exclusively at uh, lunchtime. So we, we, just, we essentially added the day of the week and the hour. And yeah, so this is the PRs count per hour. So for each hour, uh, from zero to twenty-three, yeah, from f to the midnight, uh, you can see how many PRs were created through that time of the Stackler re Learn repository. So you can see a lot of the uh, a majority of them are being created at the at the lunch time at the twelve o'clock, with uh, a small percentage being uh, at the at the morning time. The time zone here is not necessary because uh you can just use it as a uh, you can just use it globally uh we the the time zone used here is i think the standard london time or central europe time and you can see how much activity for each hour your repository gets in regards to pull requests then we can also print uh prs per day of the week so zero is is Monday and up until to the Saturdays and Sunday. 
And it, this is kind of interesting because uh, I, I would expect really a much lower activity on the Saturday and Sunday, but it's not so much compared to the other days. We also collect the pull request count, uh, pull request size feature, and that's basically us telling that you know this number, this number of lines that the pull request got changed represents uh, S label for small labor, and this number of lines represent M label for medium labor, and etc. So that's basically our metric, and. You can see that the, 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 the most pull requests are being of size uh, X is so extra small. And with the, this would represent, I, I would say, also a real world because you have so much uh, less pull requests of X large size. And then we can, we can also see at how many, how many, uh, PR contributions for where for each contributor present in the data set. So I've printed only a, a top 50, but you can see that the, the it has a long tail. So, you know, you can have some really active contributors, but then you will have a, a large number of contributors that contributed less than, I would say, let's say 50 times, et cetera which is not desirable for a pull request reviewer. So we would be, we are going to look at that later. Uh, yes, here we can see a cumulative sum of those uh, pull request counts per contributor. So you can see that's a lo really long tail, which is not necessary for us. And here, you know, it's, inter it's interesting because basically one contributor has really a high number of pull requests found. So, yes, this is the cumulative sum, not this, this is the cumulative sum. And basically I've tried right now just a KNN model, which is really simple and not really efficient and not really uh, good, I would say, but this was just to show that you can do something with the data. and. I've this K and N model on hour and a day. So you have a contributor and you have a day of week that that contributor uh, uh, made a pull request and an hour. And for each pull request you have just this record. We train that data on the on on the scikit-learn K and N model and uh, we print the score, which is really unusable. And this is this raises questions because uh, how can how can you in the end evaluate the reviewer recommendation? Because just doing a, a KNN neighbors, it's really dependent on how many top models do you recommend. Oh, top, on how many top neighbors do you recommend? So if I recommend 100 re reviewers, the scores are better, but you don't want to recommend 100 reviewers for a pull request. You want to recommend, I would say, top five and etc. So now we can now we can uh, we can filter the data set on on the on the pull requests that have been that have been created just last six months. And do yeah. We can we can now see that a large number number of pull requests has uh, a large number of contributors have uh, pull request count one. So that is also you know something you don't want to use in review recommendation because those are just one time contributors to the repository. So we can filter that out. Yes. And the last hypothesis that that I was wrong with, you don't have you don't recommend reviewers based on their pull request count because uh, a good reviewer does not have to be a good pull request creator, and also vice versa. We can also look at the reviewers' data uh, then, and uh, right now the reviewers reviews data is stored as a nested dictionary. 
But if if you have any uh, if you have any suggestion, if if that's good or bad, we uh, we we can change that to be in a standalone data frame. I would say it may be pr probably practical more in standalone data frame than as a nested uh, column in the pull request data. And essentially, yeah, I've I've processed the data and. You, you have, for each review, you have a commented, you have a state which can be commented, approved request changes or, or something else. And yeah, one of the problem was that some of the pull request creators are reviewing their PRs. So for example, uh, uh, it's a common thing that the pull request creator leaves some comments on their pull request so the other reviewers understand which uh, is not good for you as a review recommendation, re reviewer recommendation model, because you want to uh, have a data only on those reviewers that are not the authors of the pull request. So we filter that out and we can see uh, now the data. Uh, and this, uh, this is basically a review count per each contributor. And this is all the reviewers found in the scikit-learn repository. And now you can see that a lot of them has, have only one review. A lot of the contributors have uh, one review. And it's last, last six months, so it's not all the data throughout the scikit-learn history. So this is also a thing you want to filter out. And yeah, you can now see uh, top 20 reviewers. So. We can also look at the type of reviewers, of reviews, and that's, uh, yeah, comments is approved, changes requested, and dismissed. You can see that the, the, the dismissed and changes requested is used barely. So that might be not so important for a reviewer recommendation model. And last thing, I printed out the uh, approved and commented count for each reviewer in the data, which you can see that <clears throat> a lot of people, uh, a lot of approved count is by blue, you can zoom in, and the comment count is by yellow, and a lot of people tend to comment, and comment even, even those people that are in the long tail with respect to the approved uh, reviewer count tend to comment really uh, in high amount. And the approved reviews are, uh, of course, that they are less common. And they essentially does not have a tail like, like comment uh, reviews. So you can see <clears throat> it in the, 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 um, the approved reviews count ends like in, in somewhere in here and it's not continuing, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, so so we can we can use also comments in recommendation as a recommendation metric. Yeah, and I will give you an update when we will have something more than this. Any any questions to to the demo? Like no, um, but just uh, one comment. Um, put a little bit more verbose uh, text cells into the notebook um, because it feels yes. to me like um, it, it is a good notebook. Obviously, you explained all the stuff um, that is happening in the notebook, and we can uh, transform it into text cells. Um, that that would be really handy um, because to me it feels like an valuable input to the um, black flag um, um, initiative to the AI for CI um, is not really um, it's not really a feature that they also look at, but it feels correlated. If if the stuff that you are analyzing, like who's reviewing what with what kind of a result, that might be a good input to the black flag people. So it would be uh, helpful if you have um, a lot of explanations in there. Um, 
show it, at least show it to uh, Michael. Yes. Michael's the photo. Okay. Cool. Um, any other questions? Yeah, with the with the with the text Thank you, Tom. with the text I was uh, at the beginning just playing, and then I realized realized that oh, I, I need to comment so that the others understand. <laughs> Sorry yeah. about that. That's um, that's a common common uh, case, I guess. Uh, thanks, Dominic. Ah, come on, press stop.